Good afternoon from Xfinity Center in College Park. The Terps 84, Bryant 70. I'm Wayne Viner, Mason Viner, Cordell Woodland. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. Show Mary all made his debut. That's got to be the storyline. What did you see out there? Yeah, uh, I guess a lot that I liked. Um, pretty raw basketball player, a guy that uses his height well, knows knows what to do with that, which we have not seen from a lot of Maryland basketball players recently. But he stretches the floor and he gives them something different. You know, it looked it looks good against Bryant, but we'll see coming up against Indiana and Ohio State what he's ready for. And I don't think. It's going to be very similar to tonight. I think they can make effects on games, but it's going to. This was just kind of a warm up, warm up game for him. Yeah, I thought Cho came in and from the minute he got off the bench, the energy in the building instantly went up. As soon as he touched the floor, the team felt it. Uh, he comes in, gets two put back dunks, crashes the offensive glass. He's just the length inside the, the inside the paint on defense is something you can't avoid. So it's definitely a plus for Maryland to have him out there. It was good to see him out there today. You could tell he got a little winded uh, pretty quickly, but that's expected in his first action. So I think you can only go up from here. So if you follow the Twitterverse, half of the people uh, or more are saying this is a huge upgrade from where we were. Just having him on the court, he doesn't miss layups. He didn't miss the dunks. The ball goes in the basket. And then there's still the Mitchell twin sort of controversy swirling around. But I'm going to choose to focus on the positive. Once Bryant figured out that Scholl could play, he drew enough attention, even though he wasn't part of the offense, to open the middle up. They had to watch where he was because he was dunking the putbacks. And that changed the floor balance. Yeah. So you look at Cowan who had 19. You got the double-double, uh, 11 points, 10 boards out of sticks. At some point, Maryland out there looked like a real team again. Y your take? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You got a guy that uh, he draws attention because he dunks the basketball. And whether, you know, a dunk is two and a three-pointer is three points, dunks have these unique effects on games. You know, you're talking about a guy that all it takes is for him to catch the ball inside. And if you got a guy that I would say is six seven, he's dunking the ball. You know, he's not laying it up. He's not throwing up hook shots. He puts the ball in the basket. That's something that we have not had a lot of guys that do under Mark Turgeon. You know, you go back to Alex Len, Tchaikovsky, even with Jalen Smith, they try and make layups instead of dunking the ball, and that's always been a huge problem. But you're looking at a guy that his main offensive move is to turn around and put the ball in the basket. There's no question whether that's going in or not. Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as Cho goes, his height is definitely a, a, a big factor for them on the block. It seems like he does have to get a little better with having the ball in his hands, putting the ball on the floor. Uh, the one time he did, he, he was able to get stripped. But you put the ball up there near the basket, he's going to go finish it, like you said. As far as Maryland as a whole today, I thought their length uh, was really what won them the game. They cr they killed the, the, the glass in general, and you started to see that just – them being the more aggressive team and the more physically dominant team ended up overtaking Brown, who, who hung around for the good part of the game. They hit some shots, uh, forced a lot of turnovers for Maryland, but the, the, the length and the physicality that Maryland brought, I think, is what separated them. You know, we talk about post-scoring a lot, and whether Chul can make any back-to-basket moves or anything, I think you immediately notice that he demands respect just by his size and ability to put the ball back in the basket. He's not a guy that you can leave unattended. He's not really, whether no. he is or not. To your peril, if you're going to leave him alone, he's probably going to get the offensive glass. Right. Yeah, it's going to be a lot different in the Big Ten. We have a very small sample size, but this looked like every other game Maryland was in until he came on the floor, and suddenly it just changed the balance. And if you say it's unfair because he's 7-2 and it looks like he can play, well, that's why we have him. He's 7-2. Right. He looks like he, he might be able to play. We have Indiana at noon on January 4th to kick off the new year. And then the big boys come to town. Ohio State's got some size. Still say that if you look at Sticks and Scholl, you got 14 foot of human. And they, together they weigh 300 pounds. So we'll see how they do against some bigger dudes. But that, that was a, a nice look when they ran back on defense with Shoal in the middle, yeah. pushed more, more sell to small forward and six to the big four. That's a big that, lineup. That's, that's pretty good. Big lineup. Uh, I think that coming up here, you're going to have to uh, – you, you just have to value the basketball more. I yeah. mean, you can talk about all the positives with Shoal and, and everything that went right today. This team just – 
especially early on today, does not value the basketball no. at all. Uh, I will go almost close to at all, which yeah. is not a good characteristic. This is a big dog post-game show. We'll be back at Xfinity Center after this word from Rick Jacklich. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jacklich Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Scott Winters? Where do you want to go with us next? Well, I mean, they only won the game by 14. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you guys actually want to talk about this? No. I don't even know enough of that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's too touchy right now. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's a preview conference play. All right, three, two, one, back on the floor. We're anxious to go see this press conference, see if Chol actually comes out and talks to the media. Terps take it 84 to 70. Anything jump off on the stat line, guys? Definitely the rebounds. Uh, I, I don't. I can't really see what Brian's rebounds it's were. It's about 48 to 20. Yeah, I mean, I know they definitely doubled them up on the glass from that point on. Maryland got so many offensive rebounds, and Dante Scott was another energy guy that I saw today. He had at least one possession in the second half. We about three offensive rebounds on that one possession and finished it off with an and one layup. So uh, guys it, like him coming off the bench stood out. Well, he got the start. It's strange looking at a stat line. The guy has seven rebounds. They're all offensive boards. Right. Uh, that's some nice work. Ayala makes a couple threes, yeah. doesn't shoot much. Uh, who said he was warming up with the forwards today? Yeah, that was a report that came out before the game that Ayala was kind of their, I guess, plug-in guy down low. I, I don't really know what that's about. He's not a forward. I mean, he can play probably one through three at the college level, but definitely not a guy down low. Yeah. At the end, you know, the stats look nice from this game, but they, they won against Bryant by 14. You know, it's it's one thing to say that, yes, they've lost the last two games. They looked awful in both of them. But it was yet another time where I feel like I watched this team, and for the first 10 minutes, you're like, what what are we doing? Nobody looks like they're unorganized or unprepared. They don't value the basketball. It's one thing to not know what you're doing and still say make smart plays and have a high basketball IQ and, and look like you have some – wherewithal about what you're doing, but they just look completely lost at the beginning well, of most well, season. Brian's definitely a, a fundamentally based team. They don't have the talent or the size to keep up with Maryland. The score shouldn't be as close as it is. I think them just being fundamentally sound is really what kept them in the game. They, they were able to get the ball in the middle of the zones. They really got whatever shot they wanted to for the most part, but Maryland's defense and their length uh, made it tough for them. And then was, once Maryland gets to running up and down the floor and cut out the turnovers the way they did in the second half, they can create separation with anybody. And I think that's the key. If Maryland does not turn the ball over, values of possession, because every coach I've ever talked to and all the coaching I've done was say, hang on to the ball. Right. You can't uh, score if you don't have the ball. Right. So hopefully you get better at that. I'd like to see this be the one team, the Turgeon team, that gets better. So there are a couple minutes today where they look legit, but Indiana, Ohio State. Yeah, we've got to bring a, it off. Yeah, they, and then at Purdue. They got a lot to look ahead to. But one of the things that you can't do, and I'll hammer this one home, is there were some plays early on where they got trapped in the corner and, and they just weren't, didn't look like they were thinking. They were just throwing the ball around. If you grueling. allow teams, especially on the road, to get big plays early on, get the few dunks that Brian got, you're going to put yourself in some tough situations. I'm not really saying that 
that they can't get better, but there has not been a lot that points to them being able to improve from here on out. But hey, you know, they, they had a huge they had a huge change. They have 18 left. 18 games. They had a huge change this week uh, as far as personnel, and maybe that that will kind of kickstart something going forward. And with that, final words? Uh, yeah, just look for consistent. If you're Maryland, you really want a home or a home consistency and getting off to fast starts at, as the game starts. You're getting in the conference play now. These are when the games really start to matter. You can't afford to go the first five minutes of the game with three points and think that you're going to be able to fight your way back in every day. If you're Maryland, consistency has to be the driving point this week. And we'll take that as the final word. Uh, we will see you again next Saturday at 12 o'clock, or after the game, the noon game, as Indiana comes to Xfinity Center. Remember to catch Turp Talk on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. Uh, we have a Science and Kirk Monday morning on WNST tomorrow at 8 a.m. And then, of course, on Saturday before the game, you can catch the Sports Maven on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. We will see you in a week.